So welcome everybody and thank you so much for um, being here on behalf of the Tufts Career Center. I'd like to welcome you and thank you for joining us at this session. Beyond Tufts, working abroad, finding internship programs or postgrad work. I'm Kelly Roberts, Assistant Director for Career Advising, and I also work with students interested in government, international affairs, uh, the career community. I have a personal interest in this topic, having worked in the international education space uh, in the field for many years and now advising students at Tufts who want to work internationally. And we know the, you know, the advantages of working abroad, whether it's developing your skill sets, your mindset, building confidence, solving problems, or gaining cultural sensitivities. And we know employers are looking for some of these interesting skills. So we're really excited to focus on this session today on providing you with the knowledge and the tips about navigating working abroad and finding an internship abroad. So joining me from the Career Center, uh, some of you, you may already know my colleague, Malika Silka, and she's assistant director for career advising. She also works with students interested in sustainability and environmental careers. She's gonna be my co-pilot today. Thank you, Malika, for being here and, um, and uh, collaborating on this. I also wanna sincerely thank our colleagues from the Tufts Global Education Office and the Tufts Office of Scholar Development for collaborating with us to put this session together and join us uh, to present today on this panel. Just wanna let you all know if you have any questions during this session, please feel free to use the chat during our presentations. We're gonna do our best to answer them during this session, but if we don't get to them by the end of the one o'clock timeframe, um, Laika and I will leave the chat open from one to 1.30 to answer your additional questions. So let's begin. Uh, we wanna first start out with uh, showing you what we're gonna cover in today's session. And we're gonna go over the exploration uh, piece, the initial questions, why do students go abroad? Um, what's the structure that the international experiences take? The Office of Scholar Development is gonna present about options for academic year and post-grad fellowships. And the Global Education Office is gonna present about education abroad with embedded internships, talking about holiday nomad visas. And uh, I'm gonna present about Innerstride so you can leverage that in order to get a quick start and how to find those opportunities overseas or those internships. And then Malika is gonna share something about a sample of a valuable curated resource that we're, we've been developing for a while now um, to help you explore your options for finding international experiences. And then we're gonna wrap it up with uh, suggested next steps, like what can you do after this session to begin that search? And we will take your questions at that time. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn this over to Malika. Thanks, Kelly. Um, so why do students go abroad? So we'd like to hear from you. Um, so we're gonna take an online Zoom poll and I just encourage everyone just to give us your quick answers kind of like in this moment. So I'm hoping that technology works for me. So on your screen, um, you're gonna see a Zoom poll pop up. If you're a staff member, faculty member, and you're on this call, um, don't answer. Um, but right now, for those of you who are on, just this will be uh, anonymous. So hopefully, look through the answers. If your answer is not on there, feel free to throw that in the chat. But in this moment, what are your top three reasons for wanting to go abroad? And then I'm going to share the results anonymously. So results are coming in, I'm watching it, thank you. We're almost there. Okay, great, keep answering. Okay, I think there's maybe like three or four people I'm waiting on. I'm just gonna wait another 30 seconds. Okay, it looks like uh, Okay, it looks like voting <laughs> or serving has kind of slowed down. So I'm just going to share where we're at right now. Okay. All right, so hopefully you should see um the results up on the screen. Kelly, can you see? Hasmin, can you see results? Yes. Okay. So it looks like um the ones people are saying that 
um, overall, they want to increase their fluency and or learn another language. Um, I also see that people, <laughs> which makes sense because of the title, most of you might want to pursue an internship or full time job um, abroad. Um, some of you are interested in it looks like about nine of you are interested in pursuing a graduate or fellowship program. Um, but it looks like overall, a lot of people want to learn another language or even discover a new culture. So thank you. Thank you for sharing those results. Um, so I'm just going to stop sharing. OK. So there's no one right way um, or one you know, perfect reason for going abroad. Um, going abroad can take many different uh, forms. So for some of you, it might be part of an education abroad experience um, or embedded into an, a, a work opportunity, embedded into an education abroad experience. Some of you may pursue something research. Maybe there's a faculty member that's pursuing research in another country, um, or there's a Tufts uh, program specifically that always takes people every year to a certain part of the world. Maybe it's a work or uh, work or uh, academic type fellowship program um, that you could take while you're undergrad or after. Uh, maybe it's an internship for a US-based company that has locations in other uh, cities across the world. And we have examples of that uh, later. Uh, maybe it's a short term of volunteer service experience. So like at a college that I used to work at, um, students would spend their spring break volunteering in Haiti. Um, so sometimes schools list that as alternative spring break. And then maybe you want to take a semester off and you just want to explore and like, you know, learn about other cultures and maybe um, you're thinking before I go into grad school or professional school, I want to take a gap year. So these are all the different ways that going abroad um, can take different forms. So I'm going to pass this on to Anne Moore. Um, Anne, can you wave so that people can see who you are? It is I. And, and she, <laughs> she's going to tell you a little about who she is and the Office of Scholar Development. Yes. Hi, um, so I see some names I recognize in the chat. Hello, beautiful friends. It's so nice to see you. Um, I, my name is Anne. Um, I, um, I work in the Office of Scholar Development and that is a fancy way of saying that my job at Tufts is to connect beautiful geniuses such as yourselves with opportunities for money or glory, or the combination of money and glory. So I run all the um, nationally competitive award programs. Um, Fulbright is one, if you're at this um, info session, you may well have heard of. Um, and then uh, there are ways you can pursue graduate study in the UK after graduating. Um, there are all kinds of stuff. Um, so national competitive awards and then also undergraduate research opportunities. So some of the stuff that Malika was talking about, um, you know, the graduate um, research assistant or the um, GRAP, right? The Global Research Assistant Program, um, summer scholars, things like that are also ways that you can study abroad while you are an undergrad. Um, yeah, and we work in partnership with the STAR Center and the Scholarship Committee. Um, yeah, can you switch it to the next slide? There we go. Oh, look, more information about me. Um, yeah, so I did my PhD here at Tufts in English Lit. Um, and yeah, so I will say, I guess a little bit about um, what are some of the ways that folks get abroad and then what, um, I think are some of the benefits of the application process and, and then a few specific uh, things to apply for. Um, yeah, so I now I don't even remember what the first thing was on that list because like something on my phone buzzed. Um, what do you, so Fulbright is one thing that is a way that you can, after you graduate, either teach English or study abroad. Um, and again, I'm actually going to put my info in the chat here. So if you have any 
questions about specific opportunities, you can reach out to me directly or go to my website, which will have links to all these programs that I'm talking about. Um, so Fulbright is probably the best known way for current undergrads to study abroad after graduation. You can do an independent research project of your own design pretty much anywhere in the world. You can apply for um, graduate study, for funded graduate study for one year pretty much anywhere in the world or teach English for a year. So these can often lead to long-term um, uh, work opportunities abroad, especially like the ETA has led many students to long-term careers in international education, for instance, right? Um, the research grant, you know, applying for a research grant often gives students, um, you have to put a bunch of stuff in place ahead of time, like make connections in the host country in order just to apply for a Fulbright. And so through that process of networking, I know that's like a big career center, we're just networking. Um, but through that process of making connections with folks in your field, um, in other parts of the world, you're then more likely to get into a graduate program, um, be able to pursue a research opportunity with, that you're getting directly paid for, you know, like brainstorm with your research affiliate about other ways you could get money to go do this work, et cetera. Um, so there, are, I say all this to say there are really significant, like, Things like Fulbright and um, even the ones that are less well known, you know, further down this list, the American India Foundation has the Banyan Fellowship, where you work for an NGO for a year um, in India. Um, and then Princeton runs these programs in Asia and Africa. They're loosely affiliated with Princeton University, but um, where you work for an NGO in either of those places. So any of these, I also help people apply for the Peace Corps. I help people, um, I'll help you apply for anything, honestly, now, or frankly, for the rest of your life until you are affiliated with some other school and then their fellowship advisor will help you apply for things. <laughs> um, but the benefit of this process, I think, is to have a sense of where you wanna go in your life and also to make, um, connections with um, people in those places. And the only other thing I wanted to say, I know we got a lot to go through, so I don't want to talk much longer, but I did want to share with you. Ah, oh no. Uh, Malika, can you click on the ProFellow link? It's not mm -hmm. working for some reason. Um, so I just, if you leave with one resource. Um, can you see it or can you see? I cannot, I think you need to like. Okay. I'll stop sharing and reshare, or if you want to share your screen. No, you do oh. it. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going to give you give the link in the one chat. Second. I have it. Is this it? This is it. Perfect. Yeah. Um, anyway, actually, you know what I am? I lied. I am not sharing my screen. Ah, okay. Except you're not letting me. You have to All let right. I'm sorry. We're very professional here. Hold on. You should be able to share your screen now. Okay. And so I can. Great. Um, okay. You don't care about that boring tab. Um, okay. So this is the thing. I'm gonna log in. You can't see my password. Um, right. But so this is a really cool resource, you can find different kinds of programs down here, citizenship requirement, location, et cetera. So it's very, um, it's very useful in that way. And the only other thing I wanted to call your attention to is they have this blog, where the heck is it? Fellowship clubs. Yeah, they've got a fellowship application guide fellowships database, they've got all this stuff down here. And if you, um, articles, here we go. Look, you can find a whole list of fully funded master's programs, for instance. They've just got a ton of really, really valuable resources, mostly in the form of listicles 
Um, so if you, like me, have spent an embarrassing amount of your life reading like ranked lists of Matt Damon performances or whatever, um, enjoy more listicles that might be more directly useful for you. Um, when you create an account, they immediately start spamming you um, like any good capitalist would. And so, but the, the blog um, is actually pretty useful. Anyway, so I'm gonna stop talking for now, but I will be here to answer questions afterwards. The Great, end. thank you, Anne. So I'm gonna put the PowerPoint back up. All right, so now we're gonna have Hasmeen. Hasmeen, do you wanna start and introduce yourself? And these are your slides. Hi everyone, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is uh, Hasmeen Peaches Juventus, uh, and I am the Global Program Manager here at Tufts Global Education. Uh, and I work uh, with external programs and also programming for all students uh, who are in the process uh, or will be going uh, to study abroad. Uh, and also adv uh, offer advising appointments for anyone who just might even be thinking about it. Uh, so the next couple of slides, we'll be talking about like the relationship between like global education and like work after Tufts. Um, and also while you're still a student, uh, so this first slide is about embedded internships uh, going abroad. Um, and so uh, if you are interested in studying abroad while you're a student at Tufts, we have two different paths. Uh, one is Tufts programs abroad, uh, where Tufts uh, directs 10 programs in 10 different locations. Uh, and then we have external programs where we partner with different organizations and institutions and we have a wide variety of focus areas and locations. Uh, and so uh, there's a lot of like uh, differences uh, between each uh, different programs that we offer. And we fully encourage you to look at our global education website or to come book an appointment to see which one might be best for your goals. Uh, and so for Tufts programs abroad or TPA, uh, some programs in particular uh, have internships that you can take either for credit or no credit, uh, just depending on how your workload might be. Uh, and so these programs are Tufts in Madrid, Tufts in Chile, and Tufts in London. And some examples uh, of where you can find these internships are in the fields of medicine, education, environmental science, law, performance arts. Uh, and again, uh, the one big difference is that for TPA programs, they could be for credit. Now for external programs, uh, there are some programs that already have internships that are a part of the program. So when you are selecting your course load, uh, it's already present as part of your curriculum, whereas for other programs, it's optional in addition to your courses. However, for external programs, internships do not have credit. So you would need to ensure that the courses you will take will be at least 12 shoes. Uh, before committing to the internship. And the way you find out if you're earning 12 shoes is by doing transfer credit requests in SIS, looking at your program website, speaking to your program coordinator, and just ensuring that you're meeting that minimum before you decide to complete an internship. But if you do, some of these programs um, will have really amazing variety. Uh, so for example, one of our partners, uh, School for International Training or SIT, has programs that, again, have embedded internships. And these are topics such as like human rights, immigration, climate change, community health. Uh, and for some of these programs, they even go to multiple countries or really focus on one country. And it's just really exciting to see how you can learn from these programs and then utilize it both while you're abroad, but also when you come back to Tufts and look afterwards. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, and here are just a couple of links that will be available to you after the presentation that lead you to our academic policies, uh, the example of our partner, School for International Training, uh, and also our Tufts programs abroad. Great. Okay. Now, what about like looking after you graduate? Um, so a couple of options that we'll discuss, uh, the first being the holiday visa. And so the holiday visa is available to US citizens uh, for five different countries for the ages between 18 and 30 to work in that country uh, and live in that country for a set period of time. 
Uh, and so these five countries are Australia, New Zealand, South Korea, Ireland, and Singapore. Uh, and so there are some general requirements that each of these holiday visas share, such as like being within the age range of eligibility, no criminal record, proof of funds, proof of health insurance, and possession of a US passport. But then each country does have its own additional requirements and these requirements change from year to year. So if you're interested and perhaps working in any of these countries, it's important to prepare and plan ahead so that you're aware of the requirements and you're able to complete all of them as you apply. Okay, next slide, please. All right, and then the next potential option could be the digital nomad visa. Uh, and so a digital nomad visa is a visa that allows you to work remotely uh, in another country. Um, and so normally, uh, you would either have a position that you from with an employer from the U.S. that you can manage remotely, or you have a position um, where you're in charge of like a business or a manager, but you can still manage that while being abroad. Uh, and so again, much like the holiday visa, there are some general requirements, uh, such as having proof of a remote job, proof of a certain amount of income per month uh, that though the uh, amount does vary between countries, uh, valid US passport, proof of health insurance. But in addition, each country does also have its own requirements. But a difference between the holiday and digital nomad visa is that for digital nomad visas, there are more countries that are able to uh, provide that passport, I'm sorry, that visa um, for US citizens. However, um, this does require you to have a position that can be handled remotely, whereas with the holiday visa, it's just those five countries and you have to have a position where you're working for an employer or organization within those countries. So something to think about. Uh, and then another difference is that uh, you will be paying um, for your expenses at the rate of the country where you're living in. So if you do decide to have a job remote from the US, but you want to live somewhere else as you work, consider what costs and expenses you might have because some countries are more expenses to live in than others. And yeah, and so just a couple of options for you all to consider, uh, whether you're a current student or whether you're an upcoming senior or junior who's looking for opportunities after you graduate. Uh, and again, our global education office is in Downing Hall. Uh, we have our website uh, where you can set up appointments with us. And we look forward to talking with you soon. Thanks for coming. So next, we're going to have Kelly Roberts, and she's going to talk a little bit about one of the tools that is available to all Jumbos. Yeah, thanks, Malika. So I'm going to put in the chat here so you have it the direct link um, to get to Innerstride. And I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to stop sharing just in case. Sure. Yep. Great. So if you can all see my my screen here. Um, so this is so when you first start out, um, the link that I just shared in the chat. This is where it's going to take you to our resources page of the Career Center, and you're going to click here to log in, use your Tufts email, and it will get you in to enter stride once you get there um, you can see the dashboard now um, and if you can't let me know <laughs> um, but this is the enter stride dashboard and as you'll see there are four different um, the, they divide the platform up in four different ways under jobs at the top here network learn and tools and for our purpose today we're going to focus on the jobs tab which has these other functions search jobs job alerts, US visa insights, and country insights. And we're gonna to focus today on the search jobs, the job alerts, and the country insights. Uh, and I'm gonna walk you through those to demonstrate their value. The jobs tab you'll find is sort of the bread and butter of Interstride in terms of what they were designed to do to help for finding opportunities abroad and also for international students to find jobs in the US. So we'll start with country insights. So say that you have a interest in finding some opportunities um, in any country. We're just going to pick one as an example, say France. 
we can pick any of these, we can click on France. And this is gonna bring you a general overview of the country and what, you know, different information. So here we have cost of living, immigration, jobs, um, and an overview of the visa and work permits, and also banks, uh, tax, you know, thing, anything you could ever wanna know. Um, but on the left side, you can also get even more specific where you can look by the city. And so we can click on Paris, and then it will tell you some tabs specifically in those, those buckets of areas. So this can give you an overall, overall information about local working, immigration, visa, and work permits. And if you like what you see here, we then suggest that you go over to the search jobs tab. And this is where you can actually use the filters to search here. Um, and you can change the country here to the, let's say we'll go forward with the example we're using. So France and we can search by full-time or internship positions. We can hit apply changes and this will bring up over 5,000 listings within France and we can get more specific by the city. Um, also wanna point out, uh, you know, if you're fluent in French and you wanna look for opportunities, you can put it in your native language here for the search. So we can put in French words here and you'll see it goes to 606 within that keyword. And just to show you the difference, um, if we will put in that's for education teacher, you can see there's 52 listings. So you could get even more if you're using, um, you know, the language of the country that you're going to and you're from there, whichever way you want to use this. Um, so as you develop your searches here and you um, have curated and like what's coming up, you can save the search here. And then you can go under the job alerts because if you wanna conduct multiple searches in different countries and different types of jobs, you can save those alerts. And then here I've saved a couple here. You can see I have one for France and Taiwan and we can click on any of these and filter them out. And the reason why this is um, you know, a helpful idea is there's over 200,000 jobs on this platform. So if you create these filtered search job alerts, you can come in and rather than having to log in and go through all the different listings, you can curate them and then just go right to here and filter accordingly to what you are looking to look at. Um, also wanted to mention, they do have a networking tab here, but we also recommend for, uh, we have great resources in, in the um, Career Center using the HERD. Um, you can find that on our main Career Center website. And that has um, over 2,300 alumni that you can talk to and they are all over the world. So you can curate talking to people from, from that way too. We could go in and put France and look up people that have either been there or are currently there. And also Tufts University's uh, LinkedIn page. You can go and look under the alumni tab. And if you need to have any more questions about any of this, feel free to visit the Career Center to talk about that. Um, and then the last note on Innerstar, I just want to remind for seniors is to go in and change your email from Tufts when you graduate to your personal email. And that way you'll be able to continue to access Innerstride once you graduate. I know I just gave you a taste of Innerstride right now as a quick um, dipping your toe in. Um, but if you have any more additional questions about using the system or anything like that, uh, we will have extra time after this session, or if we have it during it to answer any of your questions mm -hmm. about how to use this. Mm -hmm. um, so great. So thank you. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Malika now. So Kelly, we did have one quick question in, in the chat, and I know we're a little bit ahead of schedule too. So I would just want to encourage everyone on the call, if you do have a question and you want to put that in the chat, or if you want to direct message me, Malika Silcott, I can read off your question if you're feeling a little shy. Um, but the question for you, Kelly, is uh, will we be able to access Interstride after we graduate and no, have no long, and no longer have access to our Tufts email, which is a good question. Right, right, which is, um, and that's a great question, and that is where you will then change, go into Interstride and change your email from Tufts to your personal email when you graduate, and then you will have access to Interstride afterwards. So thank you so much for that question. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint. Let me know if people can't see it. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the resources, and I just want to reiterate that this is kind of like an ongoing process. Um, we have a lot of interest from different 
offices and different staff, um, as well as students. And so this is just a resource list of different things we thought of for this workshop, but um, this slide is probably going to um, uh, uh, be longer um, at some point, but I just want to also reiterate anyone that signed up today um, for this workshop, I will personally from my email send you uh, this PDF. I don't know if people can see it, so I'm going to share it one more time. Um, and so what I will be sending you are just basically abroad resources, whether you're working or um, abroad or just trying to explore abroad. And we've divided our sheet into programs at Tufts. Um, so for example, Ann Moore mentioned the Global Research uh, Program, sometimes referred to as GRAP, um, provides opportunities for students to work with tough faculty members on research and impact projects. Um, usually it's during the summer. The IGL initiative at Tisch um, has this program called the Oslo Scholars Program, and that's for undergraduates generally interested in human rights and political issues. Um, and so you can learn more about that on that link. Um, and then there's, I, I wasn't familiar with this, so I learned something too by doing this, the Tufts Empower Program for Social Entrepreneurship. Um, and that is also um, involving in, experiential learning opportunities for you to create ideas um, and get support for that. And then part of the PDF will be examples of international experiences completed by other students. So we're not just giving you websites, although there are many places where you could be the first person to actually have that opportunity and put Tufts on the map, which we would be very proud of. But these are all programs that have been completed by uh, Jumbos in the past. So if you're familiar with resources like Kelly mentioned, like the LinkedIn alumni search, or you don't know how to use it, you can put in the names of these programs and that might give you um, people that you can actually network with and ask them questions about what their experience was like um, in these programs as well. Um, we've tried to vary it up between teaching assistant um, type programs, which sometimes is a very popular option for people who want to learn another language or um, teach English in another country. Um, but we've also, you see here that there's a conservation program on here. Uh, Anne Moore mentioned the Princeton in Asia Fellowship. There's also a Princeton in Africa Fellowship, which didn't make it to this PowerPoint. Um, but um, you could also write, make a note of that as well. Um, and Anne, if you have that link, you could if you could help me out and put that in the chat so that if anybody's interested in the Princeton and Africa Fellowship, um, you can take a look at that. Um, and also for anybody on the call that's um, interested in consulting, McKinsey and Company, for example, they just did, I believe two weeks ago, they did, they did an information session on their McKinsey and Company Africa uh, programs where you can work in different parts, as you see here, Casablanca, Johannesburg, Lagos, if you're interested in consulting, that's something to, to check out. And then finally, um, we have some of the resources here um, for just generally searching for opportunities abroad, um, Interstride obviously being one of the first ones that Kelly just showed us, but there's also other websites, which when I asked, um, you know, Hasmin and Anne and Kelly and other people, you know, which are, what are your go to's uh, for getting information, these are some of the ones that they mentioned so go overseas was very popular. Um, so that has a, a job board, it also has information on different countries. Um, if you want to learn more about nomad visas, there's a link there. Um, working holiday visas. I found um, this great website called Ver Verge Magazine, and it's a searchable directory of different um, overseas opportunities. And then, yeah, so everyone will get um, this work, this handout um, before the end of the day. Um, so um, keep that in mind. And then I think in the future, we are trying to figure out a place on the Tufts Career website and that other offices can link to. Um, so that students who are interested in opportunities abroad that are specifically um, internships or full-time jobs that you can have that access. But just keep in mind, it doesn't, as you can see, extend to just the career center, that there are other offices that have different shapes and sizes to 
being abroad, whether it's through a fellowship or through an education abroad experience. All right. Um, it looks like we might actually have time for questions, but we have just a few more slides. Sorry, I'm just getting to that page. Okay. So what are your next steps after this workshop? We will have some time for questions, but what are your next steps? Some of you may say, okay, my next step is just to make an appointment directly with Hazmin because like, I loved what she talked about in terms of visas, or maybe like you're really exploring, you know, the Princeton in Asia and you want to work with Ann Moore's team on how to develop your application and get started, right? Before you do any of that, before you click the button that says make an appointment, these are some suggested next steps that you might want to take. So maybe it's creating an account for one of these databases like Profello or Interstride. Maybe what make, would make it helpful, especially if you're balancing coursework, is to create a spreadsheet, a simple Excel spreadsheet where you track your interests. Maybe it's the name of the program, the location of the program, application deadline, um, a section for notes, maybe even a column for if there's any tough students that have completed that program before that you can talk to. Um, we mentioned the herd. If you're not sure how to use the herd, um, the Career Center has drop-in uh, times every day during when classes are in session from 12 to 2. You can find more about that on our website. Um, Kelly, can you throw um, our website in um, the chat? Sure. And then I also want to encourage you to uh, network with faculty. A lot of departments, a lot of faculty might do, you know, trips um, and have special funding where Ann Moore can probably co comment on that a little later, but they may have different things where they're doing research and it's just like a special project, maybe not the full semester, but you can get a lot of good experience for your resume um, by networking and seeing what faculty are doing, postdocs are doing, and then go from there. Um, maybe some of the programs have info sessions virtually that you can attend. So all of these things you could attend so that when you do make that appointment with the staff member, which you see is one of the last suggestions, that you make the most of that time. Um, I can't speak for uh, global education or um, office of study scholar development, but appointments in the Career Center are generally 30 minutes. And so to maximize your time, um, if you were to make an appointment with us, you really want to make sure that you come with questions or just come with ideas. Um, and then you could utilize that. But it's totally fine, you know, with us if you are, you know, say, oh, I went to the work about workshop and I'm now interested in so many different areas and just talk them through. Um, so this is generally our contact information, so you can make note of it, but if you know the name of the office, you can just kind of Google it and then figure out the contact information there. Um, I've put my email on here. If you have questions about anything that I've said, know that you're going to get that resource sheet. Kelly um, has put her email here as well. Kelly, do you have any other comments of what they should think about before contacting you? Uh, no, I think you've covered it. Thank you. Okay. I think uh, the herd and all those resources, and I've been putting some stuff in the chat that you can check out as well. Great. And then, Anne, how would students go about meeting with the offer of scholar development if they wanted to? You're on mute. Um, either email me directly, or I have put a link to my like scheduling thingy in the chat. Um, so either of those great work yeah and then hasmin what's the best way for somebody to intersect with tufts global education if you could review that yeah um so like you said um uh, we will also only offer like 30 minute uh appointment slots uh so to maximize your time uh come in with like some ideas and like some previous research on either like uh, study abroad programs you may want to do like maybe have a timeline like whether semester full year summer um, and then or maybe afterwards um, and that is our uh, what our general email for general inquiries on the slide and then if you want to set an appointment specifically for Tufts programs abroad that would be my colleague Evan Lohman if you want external that would be either myself or my supervisor Liki Karagiannis uh, and our information can also be found on our website, which I have included in the chat. 